Yo, what's poppin' guys? Today we got Zephra Metal Foes for you. I've played all of these games on stream. Uh, if you want to go watch that instead, but for those of you that aren't interested, uh, I'll just be going over some of the better replays I had. I was learning it on stream, so the first half didn't go quite as planned, but we almost broke a few crazy boards. I think the deck had the power to actually do so but I just wasn't well-versed enough in it and misplayed a few times. So why are we playing Metal Foes in Zephra? Uh, a bunch of the engines are actually banned in the event, of course, and Metal Foes add a lot of interesting power and options to the deck, and are they're, of course, all legal as well, which is kind of important. So they obviously mesh well with Electromite, which we want to go for basically every game already. And then we also get some nice, unique interaction we have the Full Metal Foes Alkahest, which is basically just relinquished. You get to suck up one of their monsters, equip it to this card during your opponent's turn. Uh, very nifty. Uh, we have some nice recursion here in the Mithrilium and just in what the Metal Foes do as engine pieces. And since they do give us uh, some level 7s, we also get to make Vortex by virtue of going through the Absolute Dragon. And of course, what's also really, really nice here is Promethean Princess uh, has some great synergy here. Uh, it's a uh, fire, uh, as are all of the other metal foes. Uh, it gets to bring back Electromite, which is great. And since the uh, metal foes are actually psychics, we even get to run the emergency teleport. So there's a ton of really nice stuff. Beyond the Pendulum can pop your metal foes combination for even more searches. Uh, there's a bunch of nifty lines, like we can make Arc Light to search for the Illusion of Chaos. So Magician Souls can send these away to go like plus a million. Tons of really cool stuff you can do. Uh, I definitely recommend trying this out if you're already experienced in either of these decks. But if you aren't, um, well, you can watch the first half of the stream to see how hard I fumbled the bag. Uh, anyways, I have some of the nicer replays for you guys, so I hope you enjoy those. Alright, so for our first game, our hand, not so good. You could almost say it's unlucky. Just like our opponent's name. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Hilarious. Viewer retention is through the roof right now. All right. So since we do open double Oracle and double Providence, the only real line that we have here is going for a pen summon, grabbing our counter trap, going to Electromite, and then going from there. Uh, I'm going to opt to just uh, pray I get a good draw off of the Electromite. Any metal foes lets me extend a lot further. Uh, otherwise, I'm fine with just a Divine Strike follow up and having a princess so we're going to summon out the astrograph here grab back our zephrath and then fortunately we do actually find the gold driver here off of the random electromite draw now uh, this lets us use its effect here to get the para metal foes fusion now we're going to go into the princess and that's going to bring back our electromite now at this point, uh, I actually misplaced slightly, so we're going to make a cut right here to show you uh, what you should have done. Alright, so let's hope this works. I've set this up in Dueling Book. This is the same game state. So we would use the effect here. Um, not really sure how, what button I'm supposed to click here, but we would use the effect of Electromite to pop... Um, Goal driver here. So let's go to the face of extra deck. And then we would grab any of our normal summons. So I'll just grab this to my hand. And now if we use the Parametal Foes Fusion, we get to use one material from our uh, extra deck, which would be our normal monster, and one from our field, which would be our Electromite. And this way we get to summon out the Alkahest, which I'll just put uh, here, I guess. Now, since we still have our normal summon left over, we get a normal summon the sky right here. We're only locked out of special summoning. And then we will uh, uh, link summon these guys. How does this work? To grave. And then we put this guy over here. Boom. I forgot to send us to the graveyard. Now we still have our counter trap here. And we have suck. And we still have the princess live. All right, assuming I didn't screw it up, this is what I actually did here. Um, 
I unfortunately add back another Zephrath under the assumption that I'll just fuse that off for the Mithrilium here. And now Mithrilium is going to grab us a bit of follow-up, I guess, uh, for future turns for the grind game. Get back the Oracle for next turn, which doesn't matter as much since uh, we already have another one in hand. And then we get the Ambler Whale and a Counter Trap. So we're missing our Suck, unfortunately, but we're going to try to play to the best of our ability here regardless. We know that he has the Fire in hand right now. We're going to track everything. He also has the Doom Broker in hand. That's two known. Well, one known. Now it's back up to two. We know it's Doom Broker, Geek Boy. And I don't negate this. I think this is just a massive bait since if he has the uh, Ritual Spell, the Field Spell, right? Then I'm screwed because he just keeps playing anyways. And he gets the Libermancer Realized, which does nothing, basically. It just gets him a, a Ritual Monster for free. This is basically just Ritual Material. That's what this card means. So it's a good thing I didn't negate that. And now he uses the Origin Story. And there's two ways this could go. Either I negate this, he has the Ritual Spell. That's pretty unlucky. Or I don't negate this, he has the Ritual Spell. And that's even worse, actually because uh, he can just activate the second copy of the Ritual Spell then. And it's like I never negated in the first place. Uh, plus he gets to force out my pop um, by when he Ritual Summons, then he can just pop my back row. So I just want to get rid of this because this gives him some follow-up and everything. And I can't actually negate his Ritual Monsters anyways because uh, it's all going to be chain blocked. So we're just going to get rid of this. Just hope he doesn't have it. If he does have it anyways, it doesn't matter where I negate, to be honest. But like this, it keeps him off the continuous spell, guaranteed. So he has it, of course. Uh, what were we expecting? Now we know he has two rituals. He has the Fire Burst and the Doom Broker in hand, as well as that continuous spell that we saw that gives him the material. And he gets to go into the Doom Broker. Now, I opt to pop this one. Why? Uh, very easy. If we read through the Fire Burst... This thing can't be destroyed by battle. It does a bit of extra damage. It attacks a bit of extra times. That's nothing that actually threatens me, right? It doesn't kill me this turn, and it doesn't really change anything in the game state. However, the one that he did summon, the Doom Broker, uh, can attack directly, which does a bit more damage. I don't really care, but it has an ignition effect to set the trap card. So that's especially what I don't want. So if I can pop it, before he gets to use his effect, remember it's an ignition effect, that means uh, it doesn't trigger when something happens, and he can't quick effect to chain it either, right? So if I pop this now, it keeps him off of his trap, and if this inflicts battle damage, it outs both my monsters anyways. So I would prefer to just get rid of this, and we know he has this in hand. Both of these cards are public knowledge. We know he's going to summon this out because this is only a hard one, so on the activation of the card, not of the effect. And he misplays here. He should have attacked into uh, the princess because maybe he just wanted to attack into both of them because he can attack twice. But he should have still attacked into the princess first uh, because the princess can bring back the Electromite, but the Electromite can't bring back the princess. So Amblowa is going to trigger here. Pop this guy. Can't be destroyed by battle, but he can be destroyed by card effects. And in our next turn, we're going to draw another copy of the Gold Driver. Doesn't really matter, honestly. We have all the follow-up we need we grab back the electromite here and our opponent sees that it's just way too much room to deal with and surrenders here we have another wild one we're gonna open the steelin vol flames of franu gate zero and the combination and we're going to go grab ourselves the pyramidal force fusion I'm gonna set this and pen two combination needs to leave the field to get the search we're going to go for a Providence here, use this, grab our Counter Trap, now we're going to go into Electromite first, we're going to use it to send the Astrograph to the face of Extra Deck, and then we get Impermed here. So I'm not sure why they didn't just Imperm it right off the bat, um, kind of awkward honestly. So we're going to use the Parametal Foes Fusion here, and you get to use a normal monster, plus our Electromite, and go into the Alkahest. And this just sucks up one of his guys. We have a counter trap here. Uh, the combination gives us a bit of follow up here too. And it just droplets us right off the bat. So that's kind of sad. Um, 
I didn't think negating this would matter. Um, because they have tons of ways to just commit bodies to the board. This just the suck by itself wouldn't have been enough. And they go straight into Bran, which kind of shocks me, honestly. Uh, they're pitching another guy. And I'm gonna use Divine Strike to out this. Uh, they need to discard a card uh, to bring back the uh, Golden Hair. And just any one normal summon won't be enough. And it turns out they have exactly the one card that lets them keep playing. It's the Ship Shape Ship Shipping, which can banish itself to uh, actually just get this guy effectively. And now he gets out another brand, puts this in the back row. He actually draws into another plunder, which is wild. And then he uses this to push for some damage and he wants to tag it out next turn. Uh, however, I think this is also a mistake since um, this effect isn't live. We tried another combination, which really blows, but we get to flip this um, to search with it and set our Metal Foes Fusion. Our opponent doesn't have anything that's like real because he needs to discard blunders from all of his stuff. So we're just gonna pen these two. This gives him a dark attribute before that was only fires. So he's gonna go into the banishing ship, but he has no discard, so it doesn't matter. Mithrilium is going to out the one in defense, and then we're just going to be over the one in attack position. And we find painful decision, which just gives us another name. So might as well just normal summon it. No reason not to. I'm gonna go battle here, slap him for a bit of damage, and now we're gonna link these two off into an IP Mascarena. And you might think, well, that's kind of pointless, no? But actually, the Mithrilium floats here, getting us another body. For some reason, I put it into the link zone, which I, I don't know why, don't ask. You should not have put it into the zone it points to, because I'm losing out on one monster I can special summon here. But since I have Unicorn and I kept the combination in hand, um, there's nothing you can do. Uh, I just spin back whatever he commits and I win here anyways. All right, this hand looks really awkward. I had to think for a bit on how to play this. Uh, we're gonna go for the Griffin since we're only on one contract. There's no point in getting our Kepler. I grab the Oracle uh, because we might fuse later on. That lets us special summon a guy from the hand for free. Um, we're gonna just scale the Zephyrath here for the high scale and unfortunately, we only get to pen summon or two because our scales are one and seven and the monsters in hand are one and seven. So that kind of blows. What's really nice though is that the Griffin actually gets to pitch the Lamia to draw one here, which is just wild. Lamia is coming back from the graveyard anyways. And we find uh, Oracle again, which is kind of unfortunate. So we're just going to summon this out right here and we're going to go into a nice little synchro play for the Denglong gonna grab us the other counter trap here and now we're gonna use the Destrudo on this grab us a spell trap negate by synchroing into our Dawn Dragster and now we have two Omnis uh, we're gonna stack the Illusion of Chaos for no reason and we have the spell trap negate and our opponent may be thinking we get to add the Illusion of Chaos to our hand or just seeing he can't play through the three Omnis decides to surrender here all right, this replay shows off how much foresight you actually need to play this deck. Uh, I missed Blade, which I didn't realize until I got really late into the combo. Uh, it still turned out well enough, but what we should have done right here is actually set a second copy of Combination, which you'll see in just a bit why. I'm gonna go bring back the Dark Worm, grab us our Gate Zero, and then we're gonna normal summon the Steel in this left in hand to go for our Electromite. Now, um, we're going to pop the silver for Astrograph, and you might be thinking, I still need access to a, low uh, a high scale, since I only have a low scale now. What am I going to do? But remember, back at the beginning, we've actually popped the Vol Flame, so Astrograph can actually search that, since it was a card that was destroyed this turn. And that gives us access to our high scale. So, next up, I realize, oh hey, I can actually get Tuner access if I go into a Beyond right here. Since the gate zero lets us pendulum summon out our Kepler, we've already spent our normal summon here. So fortunately we do have access to the gate zero here. We're gonna go scale our high scale that we added here. And then we're gonna pendulum summon for a whole bunch. And we could have pendulum summon to different levels here from the extra deck. And then beyond the pendulum would have triggered and it would have popped both of the combinations for even more follow-up. 
And then the Vol Flame can pop our gate zero for the Parametal Foes Fusion, and we just keep playing from there. Uh, however, I didn't want to lose the Parametal Foes Fusion, and popping combination plus like another scale felt really awkward. So I'm just going to opt to summon out two sevens here so we can make an absolute dragon off of those. Kepler is going to add the dark contract for the Lamia. That's our tuner here. And we're going to go straight into the absolute here. Now, another thing to consider that you could do is you could actually keep the absolute dragon on the field and make an IP. That way, when you use the IP to go into like a unicorn or something, you actually get to uh, link off the absolute dragon, which then summons the vortex, which has an on summon effect right here, where if it's special summon, you can target one attack position once your opponent controls and return to the hand. Uh, nobody sees this coming, uh, add some more removal. However, um, I would prefer to have just uh, the negate here for free live, uh, where I don't need to commit my Omni Force since our opponent let us go first, actually. So we're just going to go Denglong. And then it's really important that you make the Promethean Princess using the Kepler here because these two guys can't float because the target here is an earth, the target here is a wind, and this locks us into only fires. So we're going to bring back the Electromite here. And now we're going to make sure that we link off the Princess here into the Ambler Whale. And now we actually get to use the Absolute Dragon for the Vortex since we're no longer locked. Electromite here, it's gonna go grab back. Gold Driver, the Astroph is in the graveyard, which I didn't realize at the time, so I just added another name here. And we're just gonna fuse it off right away. This gets us to our Alkahest. So we get to steal a monster here. Metal Foes Fusion goes back to get us a draw. Any Metal Foes does it here. And Emergency Teleport is just what we needed. Parametal Foes, remember, can also fuse from the hand, so we didn't need to summon it. Go into Mithrilium. We're going to bounce our set card, since it's not like it does anything on our field anyways. We'll just reset it. And this guy lets us put back some of our stuff and go into IP. Denglong, of course, going to float into the Zafranu as well, keeping the nine pillars live. And Mithrilium grabs us another body. I'm at like six seconds left here, so I'm clicking like super fast. Gonna bring these out and pass turn. So what do we have here? We have a negate. Um, this doesn't actually give me um, the spin off of a unicorn because I don't have a card in my hand right now. Yet uh, I will if I use my Omni here. So this could still be unicorn. This could also turn into a Griffin if I see that it just turns off the deck, right? So we have an Omni here. We have. A uh, spin or a griffin here. Uh, this lets us suck up one of their monsters and just equip it here. We have an Omni Negate. We grab some follow up. This is nice for next turn as well. And of course, we have the Promethean Princess in the graveyard for another pop. And the Swarm Ship can potentially also get us a pop. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six points of disruption. They have five cards in hand. Uh, let's see what happens. They are going second deck. I have like 20 seconds of time. There's too much text on here. I'm just going to negate it. Afterwards, I realized that it says draw three cards, which is uh, kind of crazy. And I just want to get rid of Lone Fire really quickly. It's a normal summon. And it turns out that was just enough. So that's kind of unfortunate for them. Painful decision, of course. Pretty nice draw here. And we're going to use the combination so the silver can pop it. This is the card that we put back. Um, last turn off of our Mithrilium. So good thing we did or it wouldn't be live, right? And we're just gonna go for the fusion here just to get enough damage for lethal. And then we're going to swing for game after drawing a card. Alrighty, for our final game, we have the pleasure of going first again. It's going to be against Earth Machine. And we're going to grab the Oracle. I don't respect Droll. Turns out they're running two copies of it. Fortunately, they didn't draw into it. And we're going to use Zephyrus Effect to make it a low scale. So we get the Pendulum Summon here. That's going to get us our Counter Trap as well as access to our Electromite. I'm going to use this effect right here. 
after popping the Zephyrath. Grab the Astrograph. Prismagear Gear gets us a search in the end phase, and Astrograph gets it back. And we can use the Parametalphose Fusion here for a Mithrilium. So let's us special summon out a guy from hand since we used a, a Zephyr card as material. Mithrilium is going to bounce it back. Unfortunately, we can't use it again since it is a hard once on the activation of the card. But we'll have it for follow up now. We have to bring back the Electromite. And we unfortunately don't have any scales I can pop, and the Oracle is also no longer on the field. So probably would have been better to actually link off the Astrograph instead of the Mithrilium. Um, that way we get to actually just pop uh, the Oracle there with the Electromite, maybe grab back another scale and then work from there. But it should be fine here. We get to make the IP. And we're going to set our counter trap, grab some follow up here. So right here we have a uh, negate, we have the princess coming back for a pop, and we have the IP, which can either go into Griffin here without giving them arrows, or it can just go into Unicorn for another spot removal. And our opponent draws a card and decides to surrender. 